This is Vadim from Online Training for Everyone. And in this video, I'll share with you how to pass an assessment test and get you hired for your dream job. When companies are hiring, very frequently, HR and hiring managers would like to test the candidate to make sure candidate possesses the skills and knowledge that will make him successful in the job. To determine the answer, employers use a computerized assessment tests to assess candidate skills and experience relevant to the job. Assessment tests are also helpful to determine candidates' potential and make sure a new hire makes the right decisions on the job. In this video, you will have everything you need to get prepared for an assessment test. Make sure to watch this video from the beginning to end and, if necessary, multiple times until you understand all the questions and know how to solve them easily. If you would like to practice with the most recent questions for the assessment, please make sure to follow the link in the description and in comments of this video. And now, let's go ahead and get started so we can get you prepared. In this section, we will look at the behavioral employment assessment questions frequently asked in the test. Behavioral questions are used by employers to evaluate a candidate's behavioral tendencies, soft skills, and decision-making abilities in specific work-related scenarios. These tests are designed to predict how well a candidate is likely to perform and how well the candidate will fit into company's culture based on their responses to various situational questions. Most commonly, employers use following three types of questions. Number one is scenario-based questions. Candidates are presented with hypothetical work-related scenarios or situations. The scenarios may be relevant to a specific job role or industry the candidate is applying for. Number two are multiple choice questions. Candidates are provided with multiple choice options as responses for each scenario. They need to choose the most appropriate or effective response. And last but not least are evaluation behavioral trait questions. These types of questions assess various behavioral traits and soft skills of the candidates, such as problem solving ability, communication skills, teamwork, conflict resolution, time management, adaptability, and leadership potential. Let's look at some of the specific behavioral test questions we frequently see on the test. Here's an amazing question we frequently see on the test. You are presented with the statement. In this case, the statement is, I'm working better when no one is bothering me. You need to select your answer out of seven possible choices. Choice A, strongly disagree. Choice B, disagree. Choice C, somewhat disagree. Choice D, not sure. Choice E, somewhat agree. Choice F, agree. And last but not least, choice G, strongly agree. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. This is a tricky question. So in addition to just selecting the answer, I would recommend that you build a mental strategy on how to answer and why are you selecting this particular choice. Are you ready? Let's move forward. So I'll share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Before answering this question, let's take a close look to see what employer is looking for. I believe in this particular question, employer is looking for specific qualities and skills related to teamwork and collaboration. What's interesting is while the statement, I'm working better when no one's bothering me, might reflect preference for working independently, this is not correct. The statement, if answered incorrectly, raises concerns about your ability to function effectively within the team-oriented environment. To better understand how to answer, let's imagine the scenario where you're answering this question during job interview. How would you answer? I might be wrong, but when answering, you would highlight three important points. Number one, you would highlight your collaboration skills. You would emphasize your ability to work well with others and your experiences in collaborating on projects and tasks. You probably would benefit by providing examples on how you communicate effectively, share ideas, and respect diverse opinions. Number two, you would discuss successful team experiences. You probably would provide examples of times when you worked effectively in a team setting and collaborating to achieving positive outcomes. And last but not least, I would recommend that you acknowledge your independence but show adaptability. While it's okay to appreciate periods of uninterrupted work, it's essential to demonstrate your adaptability to work in a team when required. Now let's summarize and look at important considerations on how you can answer these types of questions. 
there are a few important criteria to keep in mind. Number one is that this question measures your level of sociability. These types of questions measure your tendency to enjoy being around people and working with others. Number two is in this question, employer is trying to determine if you're a good team player. Number three, the correct answer depends on the specific job, but keep in mind that most of the jobs require interactions with other team members. So the summary here is that if your job opening requires teamwork, and most of the jobs do, it's always better to answer strongly disagree or disagree. And if you have ability to provide the rationale for your answer, make sure to use the samples that I'm just about to provide to you, as well as considerations in this note section. Let's look at the specific sample. So you presented with the question, I'm working better when no one is bothering me. Your answer might be, I respectfully disagree that I work better when no one's bothering me. In any work environment, I recognize the importance of being open to collaboration as well as team interactions. I understand that work processes can be unpredictable and that there may be situations where my coworkers require help or attention. And I'm always willing to lend a hand and actively engage with my team members to ensure our collective success. I genuinely enjoy being around people and thrive in collaborative setting. Working with others helps me leverage diverse perspectives and skill sets, which often leads to innovative solutions and improved outcomes. I strongly believe that maintaining open communications with colleagues fosters a supportive and productive work environment. What's even more important is that while I prefer to minimize unnecessary distractions and unrelated requests during my focus time, I understand that effective teamwork sometimes necessitates flexibility. In such cases, I am acceptable and capable of handling stress with composure. I have developed resilience in the ability to maintain productivity even in the demanding situations. So, ultimately, I am confident that my collaborative mindset, interpersonal skills, and capacity to handle varying work dynamics make me a strong fit for the role that requires team interactions. I am committed to contributing my best efforts to the team's success and fostering a positive and productive work environment. This is why, when I was presented with the question, I am working better when no one bothering me, I chose choices A, strongly disagree, or choice B, disagree. What are your thoughts and experiences answering this type of question? Could you please share your thought process and rationale in comments so we can all learn? In this section, we will look at the sample questions for cognitive test, which represents an assessment used by employers to evaluate candidates' mental abilities such as problem solving, critical thinking, and memory. The questions in the test can vary, but typically involve math problems, logic puzzles, spatial reasoning, and verbal comprehension. Let's look at some sample cognitive assessment test questions we typically see on the test. Here's another tricky problem which tests your critical thinking and analytical skills. You're presented with eight objects, and object number nine is missing. You need to find the pattern and select the ninth object out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Are you ready? I'm pretty sure that by now you've identified the correct object, so I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. What's interesting about this problem is that the objects that we see here form groups based on the color. And there are three groups present, the group for red objects, the group for yellow objects, and the group for green objects. Red and yellow groups are complete, but the green group is missing the object. You would argue that this doesn't help us much because all four choices, choices A, B, C, and D, they all have green objects as a sample. But this helps us to detect the pattern in the complete groups. If you look closely, you will see that objects in the red group and in yellow groups, they all have the same number of sides. For example, all three objects in the red group have four sides. Objects in the yellow group have five sides, which means that object in the green group should have six sides, because two presented green objects have six sides. And the only object which is green and has six sides is choice A. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to post your solution and rationale in comments. 
Here is an amazing question with the answer that will definitely surprise you. You're presented with the circle, broken down into the eight parts. Each part has letters inside, and letters are O, S, then comes the missing letter, T, another missing letter, O, another missing letter, and adds in P. You need to complete the object by selecting the choice of three grouped letters. Choice A is represented by letters I, I, E. Choice B is represented by letters T, I, N. Choice C is represented by letters E, I, N. And last but not least, choice D is formed by the letters of I, I, N. Take a close look to see if you can complete the object. I am going to give you a quick hint to help you solve it. Take a close look what happens if you move clockwise. I am pretty sure you are by now, so I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. What's interesting about this question is how amazingly simple the solution is. If we start with the letter P, we can form a word position. Let me spell it for you. P-O-S-I-T-I-O-N. Let me pinpoint three considerations that will help you solve these types of problems on the test. When you look at the question, the question is complete the object and letters are the choices, which most of the time would mean that you need to form the word. Circle shape on the original question mimics the clock, which a lot of times mean that you need to select the direction, which could be clockwise or counterclockwise. To solve these types of challenges, you typically need to look at consecutive letters that are already present. So the three consecutive letters that are present are P-O-S, which would kick off your thinking about the word position. As you might have guessed by now, the correct choice here is choice D, letters I, I, N, which help you to form the word position. Did you come up with the different answer? Or maybe you have other tips on how to solve these types of challenges? Please make sure to post in comments. Which was initially designed to test your spatial reasoning, but also could be used to test your cognitive abilities and analytical skills. You're presented with four shapes and you need to find the square which fits all the shapes across the borderlines. You need to select one square out of four possible choices based on the borderlines presented. Choices are A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can identify the item. Seems challenging, don't you think so? Let me give you a hint. Try to see if you need to rotate the shapes or do any other manipulations with the shapes before trying to fit them. Are you ready now? Let's move forward and I'll share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Not sure about you, but I was able to solve this challenge in three simple steps. In step one, you need to assign the numbers. In step two, you need to rotate the shapes to position them to fit. And in the last step three, you need to try all the options to find the square which fits all the shapes across the separator lines. Let's look at the example. Let's first assign each shape a number. Because we have four shapes, the numbers will be 1, 2, 3, and 4. The second step is the hardest. In this step, you need to rotate the shapes to position them to fit. And you need to find the closest square which fits all the shapes. Let's rotate each shape to get them into the correct position. Let's rotate shape 1, now shape 2, now shape 3, and now shape 4. You need to watch out because rotation could be in the different directions, as it happens in this question as well. And once you have all the shapes rotated correctly, we need to move to step 3, where we will try all the options to find the square which fits all the shapes. Square A is not going to fit them because there are 5 shapes based on the borderlines. Square C also is not going to fit them. Same with square D. So the only correct answer here is choice B. Did you get to the same conclusion? Or maybe you found a better way to solve it? Please make sure to post your answer and rationale in comments. In this section, we will look at the sample questions for verbal reasoning test for employment, which typically represents an assessment used by employers to measure candidates' ability to comprehend and analyze written information. The questions typically involve reading passages, answering questions based on the information presented, as well as identifying relationships between words and understanding the vocabulary. Let's look at some sample questions that you typically see on the test to make sure you get ready. A very interesting question for you to try your skills. 
you're presented with nine letters of the English alphabet and you need to build English business word. The letters are O-L-S-U-O-T-I-N-S. -S. Take a close look to see if you can construct English business word. I am going to give you a quick hint. The word refers to a set of products, services, and strategies that are designed to solve specific business problems and meet the needs of organizations. Did you figure it out? The answer is solutions. Business solutions are typically developed by vendors or service providers who have expertise in particular industry or functional area. The word is spelled as S-O-L-U-T-I-O-N-S. And the goal of business solutions is to help organizations improve their efficiency, productivity, profitability, and overall performance by addressing specific challenges or opportunities in a strategic and effective manner. Can you come up with any other words using the same letters only once? If you did, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. Here's an amazing question to test your verbal reasoning and analytical skills. You need to arrange the words into a coherent sentence and determine the last word in this sentence. The words are A. Coverage B. Protects C. Against D. Financial E. Losses F. Business G. Risks Take a close look, see if you can build this sentence and determine the last word in this sentence. Did you figure it out? I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To get to the correct answer, let's look at each word in this sentence to determine the meaning of the word and how to use it correct way. We start with the words coverage, business, and risks. These are not the objects of the sentence. We also look at the against and financial. These are prepositions and adjectives. The word protects is the verb and it provides valuable information in the sentence. The word losses is the object of the sentence and it provides information about what business insurance protects against. Based on this information, let's build the sentence. Business insurance protects against financial losses. Based on this, we can determine that the last word in the sentence is losses. And this is the object of the sentence, and it also provides a specific type of protection. So I believe the correct answer here is choice E, losses. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. I love this question because the answer represents such a powerful business concept. You're presented with 10 letters, and you need to build English business word by using each letter only once. The letters are N, I, N, A, V, O, N, I, T, O. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. I am going to give you a quick hint. The word refers to the process of introducing new ideas, products, services, or processes that add value to society, the economy, or organizations. Did you figure it out? I hope the hint was helpful because I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And if you have a better way to solve it, as usual, please make sure to post in comments. My answer is innovation. And the word is spelled as I-N-N-O-V-A-T-I-O-N. What's interesting is that innovation involves combining creativity, technology, and practicality to develop new solutions that meet people's needs and address emerging challenges. Innovation is also crucial for the growth and development of the businesses, economies, and societies and it drives competitiveness, productivity, and progress. Let's look at the examples of the most recent consumer innovations. Number one is streaming services. The popularity of streaming services such as Netflix, Hulu, and Disney Plus disrupted the traditional TV industry by offering on-demand access to the vast library of movies and TV shows. The fact that I can broadcast my videos and share them with you directly is also part of streaming services innovation. The next one on my list is electric cars. The development of electric cars by companies such as Tesla, Nissan, and Chevrolet has provided consumers with a more sustainable and energy-efficient alternative to traditional gasoline-powered vehicles. Another example of recent innovation is wearable technology. The emergence of wearable technologies such as smartwatches, 
fitness trackers, and virtual reality headsets had powered people to track their health and fitness, stay connected, and experience immersive digital content. We also recently enjoyed innovation of online marketplaces. Companies such as Amazon, eBay, and Etsy revolutionized the way people shop by providing them with vast selection of products, competitive prices, and fast delivery options. And last but not least on my list is the smart home technology. The rise of smart home technology allowed people to control and automate various aspects of their homes from lightning and temperature to security and entertainment using voice commands and mobile apps. Do you know any other examples of recent innovations? Please make sure to share them in comments so we can all learn. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you for helping us to become one of the largest YouTube channels to help people become smarter, increase your IQ, and help you to pass any test. If the content was helpful, please click the like button to help YouTube algorithm promote this video and help other people to find it faster. Giving us a like is also a way for you to tell us that you need more content like this, and when you tell us, we'll make sure to deliver it for you in the future. For links to free and premium resources, please check the description. You can also go directly to our website, howtoanalyzedata.net, to download the materials. I really appreciate you for your endorsement, support, and patronage of this channel. And thank you for considering to become a YouTube member and considering to subscribe. Please leave feedback, suggestions, or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.